This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I was going about my day recently, dusting the remains of my antique teacup collection, when a thought bubbled up in my mind from unknown depths. What has old Mr. Beetle been up to? That question followed me throughout the morning as I organized my seahorse print pajamas drawer and cleaned out my things I haven't worn in forever closet. What has old Mr. Beetle been up to? That tiny voice in my head kept saying, until finally I pressed the story idea alert button I installed under my writing desk. My idea music came on at once, and I sat down on my hard metal stool and wrote this story. That's exactly how it happened, except for a few minor details that might have been slightly different from what I just laid out. But sometimes it helps for storytellers to be a bit dramatic, don't you think? Let's revisit one of our favorite dramatic storytellers, Mr. Beetle, to find out what he has been up to. Our story is called Mr. Beetle Tackles Fame. Take it away, Niku. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, let's go. In a faraway land, there was a small beetle who enjoyed taking walks with his pet flea, Hesperus. <laughs> uh, yes. He took a walk with Hesperus at 4.17 each day. <laughs> um, oh, is he getting angry? I'm not angry. I'm just trying to tell you a story. A story that is not a comedy. He's definitely frustrated with the laughing. When's a boring part coming? Soon, don't worry. Old Mr. Beetle adjusted his spectacles and looked around at the crowd of young bugs. He could barely make out his neighbor and friend, Gwen, a beetle herself, who worked the music player tucked behind his energetic audience. In moments like these, he could really use an encouraging smile or nod from Gwen, but there were simply too many bugs in the way for him to see her. Old Mr. Beetle sighed and attempted to continue his story. This small beetle, Jupiter... Wait, you're naming a small beetle Jupiter? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, he, he has a big personality and a stormy temper. At this, his audience erupted into chatters and giggles. The 25th branch was positively blanketed with bugs... They were clinging to the bark and even standing on one another's exoskeletons to get a better view. Yes, Mr. Beetle's Wednesday evening story times had become something of a draw. News of his strange and inadvertently funny stories traveled far and wide, and soon, Old Bug's story time was standing room only each and every week. Reviews of his story time began to populate the arts and leisure sections of newspapers around the region, much to Mr. Beetle's consternation. When? Do you see this? It says the 25th branch now has its own form of beetle mania. What does that mean, Gwen? What does that mean? And it seemed as though every time Mr. Beetle turned on the radio, there was some mention of his weekly performances. Now tell us, what brings you to the 25th branch each and every Wednesday to see this elderly bug? Well, you just laugh and laugh because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so it's really funny. And then he bores you to sleep. It's incredible. I see. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Up next, does your pet flea seem depressed, 
Dr. Veronica is here with ideas to lift their spirits. It seemed old Mr. Beetle had become somewhat a victim of his own success. As the popularity of his story times grew, so did the size of his audience. Dozens of bugs and the occasional terrifying rodent, mostly shrews these days, laughed after nearly everything he said. It was enormously distracting as he tried to remember the important plot elements of his stories. Now, uh, Jupiter and Hesperus often took their walks on the 23rd branch. Oh, wait, it, it, it was the 21st branch. That's an important distinction. Or was it the 19th? When he stumbled over his words, they only laughed louder. When Mr. Beetle wasn't too exhausted, he still met up with Gwen for tea on Tuesday evenings. On one particular evening, during one of Mr. Beetle's extended rants about his fawning audience members, last week there was a stack of bugs six high. Gwen, they were swaying precariously throughout the entire story. I could hardly focus on my narrative arc. Gwen had an idea. And then, of course, when I got to the bit about the... What if we went somewhere else? Mr. Beetle blinked. He set down his teacup on the stone table between them. What now? Well, Gwen said, setting down her own teacup. It seems as though your fame is taking a toll on your storytelling. Really? Yes. Hmm. Perhaps we should travel to a branch where the bugs don't know you. Where they don't know me? Sure. Mm, that, that would certainly cut down on the number of adoring fans in my audience. Undoubtedly. There would be less laughter. Unquestionably. And that would be a, a positive thing, Gwen? Well, you have been grumbling quite a bit about those things whenever we have tea. Mr. Beetle narrowed his eyes. He couldn't argue with that. I think it would solve a lot of problems. Mr. Beetle took a sip of his tea and gazed out from their perch on the 25th branch. Gwen, I'm lucky to have you. You're right. Next Wednesday, we will travel to a different branch. Gwen smiled. The week seemed to fly by. Wednesday popped up like a flea off the back of a shrew. Old Mr. Beetle had spent many years on the 25th branch, and he was well past wanting to venture beyond it. But on that Wednesday in spring, when he would be expected to hold a story time, he and Gwen agreed to sneak away to a different tree altogether in order to recapture both his anonymity, he was tired of being recognized everywhere he went, and to recapture the magic of that very first story time. So they packed up their things and traveled to the next tree. Gwen, I have a very good feeling about this. Oh, yes. Unfortunately, the bugs on that tree had heard of Mr. Beetle from the Intertree Times newsletter, and they swarmed him. Uh, they crowded him. That's a better word. So old Mr. Beetle and Gwen traveled to the next tree. But apparently this tree picked up the radio signal from the 25th branch, and they too had heard of the famously hilarious and boring Mr. Beetle. Mr. Beetle and Gwen were quickly surrounded. They managed to slip beneath the crowd to escape. They tentatively crept up a third tree. All was quiet. Bugs milled about, not giving them a second glance. Mr. Beetle looked at Gwen, and she gave him an encouraging nod. Finally, Mr. Beetle was anonymous once more. He was but a simple bootmaker and late-in-life storyteller once more as well. Gwen got out her poster board and paint. 
Mr. Beetle considered what to put on the sign. I have to be careful not to reveal who I am, Gwen. Certainly true. I shouldn't make it too obvious what we're doing here, should I? I suppose not. All right, then. I have the perfect thing, Gwen. Mr. Beetle dictated what the sign should say. Elder Bug Mystery Night. Mr. Beetle began. Gwen painted the letters smoothly, and they had a charming look to them. Mr. Beetle continued dictating. Mystery event hosted by an old bug. And Gwen continued painting. And he continued dictating. You definitely don't know. Who will put you to sleep? And Gwen continued painting. Until in an entertaining way. That's it. Elder Bug Mystery Night. A mysterious event hosted by an old bug you definitely don't know who will put you to sleep in an entertaining way. Huh, Gwen murmured. Mr. Beetle glanced down at the painted sign and furrowed his brow. It looks like I couldn't fit everything. Mr. Beetle read the sign. Elder Bug Mystery Night, a mysterious event hosted by an old bug you definitely don't know. It does make it sound very mysterious. Hmm. Gwen, having prepared extensively, had an extra poster board and additional paint. But by that time, it was quite late. Due to Mr. Beetle's extreme fame, they'd had to escape several adoring crowds before landing on this branch. The sun was completely down. Mr. Beetle looked longingly at the extra poster board, but there was simply no time. Mr. Beetle settled in for his audience to arrive and wondered if anyone would come at all. Gwen set up her music player and fiddled with the settings. Amazingly, Several young bugs wandered in. What is this? It says it's mysterious. I think he's a hypnotist. Mr. Beetle's eyes lit up as he watched his listeners find spots in a semicircle around him. He thought back to his very first story time, the anticipation, the excitement he had felt. He glanced at Gwen and was pleased to see he had a clear view of her and her encouraging smiles. It was a relief to have a small audience. Mr. Beetle was sure the night would be a resounding success. In the end, there were eight young bugs present as Mr. Beetle began his story. Half of them believed Mr. Beetle to be a hypnotist. Two independently concluded he was a magician. One expected there to be a fog machine and one was looking forward to an interpretive dance performance. None of them were expecting a story. In a faraway land, there was a small beetle who enjoyed taking walks with his pet flea, Hesperus. Mr. Beetle began, launching into one of his favorite stories. The eight bugs in the audience exchanged looks, most of which were befuddled looks. Already, this was not what they'd been expecting. Mr. Beetle paused, seeing if any of the bugs would laugh. None of them did. He went on. Uh, yes. Uh, he took a walk with Hesperus at 4.17 each day. One of the bigger bugs in the semicircle yawned heavily. <sighs> the yawn caught and traveled through the bugs. Old Mr. Beetle adjusted his spectacles. This small beetle was called Jupiter. Mr. Beetle paused, waiting to see if he would be challenged on his name choice for the main character of his story. He was not. The bugs in attendance finally seemed to understand what was taking place. This was not a hypnotist. This was not a magician. This was not an interpretive dance performer. There did not seem to be a fog machine. This was a storyteller. Recognition fell upon them like a scratchy blanket. 
One of them got up and left. I'm going to find a hypnotist. Catch you guys later. Mr. Beetle's eyes darted to Gwen, and she gave him an encouraging nod. Uh, this small beetle was named Jupiter because he had a big personality and a stormy temper. How did his parents know that before he was born? That doesn't make any sense. Mr. Beetle beamed. Finally, someone was paying attention to his story. It was his nickname. Moving on, Jupiter and his dear flea, Hesperus, went out for their walk. As Mr. Beetle continued his story, he felt the quiet drape over him like a heavy winter cloak. He was used to unceasing chattering, inappropriate laughter, and constant interruptions. But after that first question from a young bug in the front, his seven remaining listeners said nothing. They made no sounds whatsoever. The silence was enormously distracting. Then Hesperus slipped out of his collar and hopped away from Jupiter. Uh, excuse me one moment. The seven bugs murmured amongst themselves as Mr. Beetle skittered over to Gwen. Do you think there's any chance he might dance? It seems like it's going quite well, Gwen said brightly. It's going terribly, Gwen. Is it? No one is laughing, and there are only seven of them. I see. Gwen, I had an idea, something that might calm my nerves and allow me to finish my story. Okay. Mr. Beetle leaned over and whispered something to Gwen. Something of laughing at anything. Oh, are you sure? Yes. Okay. Mr. Beetle skittered back to his place. Uh, so sorry about that minor interruption. Just a technical difficulty, that's all. The bug said nothing. Now, where was I? The bug said nothing. Uh, suddenly, Hesperus slipped out of his collar and hopped away. Gwen pressed a button on her music player. <laughs> the seven bugs had been sitting still, hunching over a bit from boredom. At the sound of raucous laughter emanating from the music player behind them, they all bolted upright, exchanging baffled looks. Gwen smiled pleasantly. Mr. Beetle felt his nerves unwind a bit as the laughter replaced the uncomfortable silence on the branch. You never appreciate what you've got until it's gone, apparently. Hesperus disappeared behind a rock, and Jupiter scrambled across the ground to reclaim his beloved pet. That wasn't funny at all. But when Jupiter made his way over the rock, he was met with a surprise. <laughs> Mr. Beetle grimaced. Whoopsie, wrong button. Gwen said, fiddling with the music player. The bugs in attendance began to giggle. Now that was funny. <laughs> Whoopsie, wrong button. Ahem, Mr. Beetle said. Uh, never mind that, Gwen. Uh, let's have some tunes, shall we? Some tuneful tracks? Certainly. Gwen pressed another button on the music player. Mr. Beetle took a deep breath and tried to relax his nerves. When Jupiter made his way over the rock, he was met with a surprise. There, in front of him, was an enormous web. And sitting directly in the center of the web was an enormous spy. At that moment, an enormous spider descended from the branch above and dangled ominously above Mr. Beetle's audience. Mr. Beetle was the only one who saw the spider. He tried not to panic. An enormous what? A young bug said. An enormous... The spider gazed down at Mr. Beetle with eight beady eyes. It almost appeared to raise eight eyebrows at him, too. 
Uh, spider monkey. Spider monkey? That makes zero sense. Spider monkeys don't have webs. Spider monkeys can have webs. Mr. Beetle asserted. Bewilderment covered his audience like a decorative throw blanket over an unattractive sofa. Spider monkeys can have uh, metaphorical webs. Meta what now? Uh, they can have webs of lies. Webs of trickery. I don't get it. Just then, one of the enormous spider's eight sandals fell off and knocked a button on Gwen's music player. The seven bugs, Gwen and Mr. Beetle, all stared up at the spider. Mr. Beetle scowled. If one of his listeners were to be eaten, well, that could ruin the rest of the night altogether. Gwen fiddled with the music player. There we go. That's more appropriate. Hello, Mr. Beetle said, nodding to the spider, who continued to dangle ominously. Hello, the spider said. Everyone stiffened, glaring upwards in horror. <coughs> Sorry, I had something in my throat. Not a beetle, huh? Sorry about my sandal. For some reason, the straps on that one always come loose. Shaking a bit, Gwen handed the sandal up to the spider, who slipped it back on and tightened the straps. Anyway, the spider went on, I wanted you to know I'm fasting. The young bugs exchanged some looks and whispers. You are fasting? Yes, I'm not eating any bugs for a whole month. It's very cleansing, I have to say. I've noticed other benefits, too. For example, I think my leg hairs have a new sheen to them. You can't tell because we're meeting for the first time, but my leg hairs were pretty unremarkable until I began my fast. So that's one for the plus column. <laughs> the main con is I'm ferociously hungry. One of the young bugs, perhaps the wisest among them, immediately rose to his feet and flew away. The rest of them seemed entirely unbothered. They're of a different generation, Mr. Beetle thought to himself. Mr. Beetle's eyes darted to Gwen, hoping for a reassuring smile. She managed to shrug. Mr. Beetle sighed. He disliked latecomers, especially carnivorous ones. And due to this spider, Mr. Beetle was forced to change the entire plot of his story. A spider monkey with webs of trickery? Silence engulfed the branch. As Mr. Beetle considered how to continue his story, the bugs shifted uncomfortably on the tree bark. The spider dangled ominously overhead. It was most unsettling, as you can imagine. Do you think he might still hypnotize us at the end? I hope so. Gwen hit a button on the music player, hoping to calm the mood. Mr. Beetle took a deep breath and gazed up at the stars, now visible in the dark sky. And then he reminded himself. He was a professional. He could handle this. He would forge on as every stalwart storyteller must do. Uh, thank you, Gwen, for that calming interlude, and welcome to our newest listener. The spider smiled, looking only mildly sinister. Her leg hairs did seem to catch the moonlight. Mr. Beetle stood up straight and went on. The spider monkey had Felipe. Isn't his name Jupiter? Who's Felipe? Oh, yes, Jupiter. Mr. Beetle's spirit soared, seeing how closely his listeners were attending to his story. The spider monkey had Jupiter trapped in its web of deceit. And so he did the only thing one can conceivably do in such a situation. Did he escape through his legs? Did he hide? Did he write a letter to the editor of the Intertree Times complaining about whoever must have released this spider monkey into the wild that was terrorizing him? Did he escape through his legs? Mr. Beetle barreled on. 
Jupiter did the only thing he could do. He challenged the spider monkey to a game of chess. Chess? I've never won at chess. I love chess, murmured the spider. Yes, chess. So Jupiter and the spider monkey played chess. First, Jupiter moved his pawn to... Mr. Beetle had finally righted the story that had gone so wrong. He was astonished at his own storytelling talents. He'd come with one story in his mind, but presented with the ominously dangling spider, he'd pivoted to an entirely new storyline. He couldn't believe the quality of his quick thinking under pressure. Now he could cruise to the end of his story, nearly on autopilot, since he'd found a comfortable place to direct his narrative. He nodded at Gwen, and she pressed a button on the music player. Then the spider monkey brought out his king's knight and placed it. He went through each and every move in the chess match, Mr. Beetle happened to have a near encyclopedic knowledge of chess, and the game he now described was torn from the pages of Treetop Chess Master's monthly magazine. He knew the moves by heart. Well, nearly by heart. Then Jupiter moved his rook to... Wait, uh, no, no. All right, uh, hold on a tick. He moved his bishop... Gwen corrected him. Have I mentioned that Gwen is also an expert at chess? Ah, yes. He moved his bishop to... It was a thrilling game, one that would surely enthrall his audience. Mr. Beetle was so caught up in the retelling of this riveting chess match, the spider monkey seemed to have Jupiter in a bind. He had Jupiter's king within his sights, and was cleverly, he didn't notice that the bugs were dropping off to sleep. The dangling spider began to dangle less ominously and more lazily. But Jupiter was not fooled. He had an ace up his sleeve. Well, actually, he had a rook that he'd made sure to... Oh... Mr. Beetle looked around. All his listeners were asleep, including the spider. Mr. Beetle glanced at Gwen and saw that her eyes were closing. One of the spider's sandals fell off and hit a button on the music player. Mr. Beetle sighed. He didn't have an audience for the end of his story and he was very proud of what he'd come up with on the spot. On his next move, Jupiter would put the spider monkey in check, and within minutes, the spider monkey would free Jupiter from his webs of trickery. He and Hesperus would trot home together in peace. It was a fantastic story. Mr. Beetle considered finishing it aloud, imagining his listeners might hear it in their dreams. But he decided to hold back. Part of being a legendary storyteller is knowing when to end a story. And when your entire audience is asleep, that might be a good time. Mr. Beetle ambled over to Gwen, whose eyes were glassy. Gwen? Huh? What? Oh, 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 hi. Gwen, uh, do you think it's possible I thrilled them to sleep? I suppose so. Okay. Mr. Beetle took one more look at his audience and smiled with satisfaction. Then he and Gwen packed up quietly and tiptoed off the branch. The sky was a deep navy and the stars were out in force. A breeze drifted over the branch, and they shivered. The spider dangled sleepily above. They crept down from the branch and began the long trek home. Gwen, Mr. Beetle said once they were out of earshot, 
Yes. It was nice to have a break from the adoring crowds tonight. Oh, yes. Aside from the incident with the spider, it was rather relaxing. Certainly. Although... Yes? Well, as you know, I naturally shrink from attention, of course. Hmm. And it is quite stressful to have such a large audience. Naturally. But, well, Gwen, I feel some measure of responsibility to my fans on the 25th branch. I see. Yes, even as it will pain me to do so, I feel I must confront the adoring crowds once more. Next week, I suppose. It would be a shame to let down so many young bugs. Precisely. It was decided. Mr. Beetle would reluctantly accept his fame, as difficult as that would be. When he and Gwen made it home to the 25th branch and parted ways, they resolved to meet for tea on Tuesday and story time at their usual spot on Wednesday. accidentally pressed my automatic studio cleaner button. Ah, uh, I'm gonna be hearing from the studio spiders and beetles about this. Let me just... Ah, uh, there we go. They've requested 36 hours notice before I press that button so they can hide from the vacuums. You know, sometimes the thought does occur to me, do I have too many buttons installed? And then I just laugh and shake my head. Of course not. In fact, I need another button. I need a button disabling button so that when I press the wrong one, I have a button to fix that. Yeah, that makes total sense. Well, I hope you loved the story. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. You can visit my website at littlestoriestinypeople.com to find my picture book, episodes searchable by theme, and fun merch like t-shirts. Thank you to Niku for providing the super important reminder message at the beginning. If you loved this story, please share it with all spiders on extended fasts, any and all chess enthusiasts, hypnotists, especially those who also have fog machines, and your friends. They just might need a good story these days. Through the years, I've always tried to keep my head down and just focus on writing and producing stories I think you will love. It has truly been you, my amazing listeners, who've gotten the word out. You have helped my stories reach families around the world. I would be so honored if you would share the podcast with friends who might appreciate it. And thank you, as always, for listening in. <laughs>